No one should face MS alone, and this is a society for all people until we have a cure. And we are dedicated to getting people the access to the services they need. Welcome everybody this morning. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, educational interactive conference today on multiple sclerosis in Long Island. Joining us today is Pat Melville from the Stony Brook MS Care Center. Okay. We have Dana Mealy, who's the president of our New York City, of New York State, okay, Multiple Sclerosis Society. Annie Sibillo. Annie is the head of the MS Walk statewide. And Kelly Lanson. Kelly, the founder, CEO of Helping Hearts at Home, the biggest companion care agency on Long Island. I'd like to welcome everybody. And to start off, I'm going to ask Pat if you could talk a little bit about the MS Care Center in Stony Brook and multiple sclerosis on Long Island what you're seeing. Sure. So um, I think that uh, there are some people that believe the diagnosis of MS is increasing. Um, there are 200, approximately 200 new MS patients diagnosed each week. And um, we probably follow about 2,000 MS patients at the MS Comprehensive Care at Stony Brook. We provide um, comprehensive care. We are a large academic medical center. Uh, we have physicians, we have nurse practitioners, we have neuropsychologists social work, physical therapy, occupational therapy. We have access to clinical trials. Um, and our philosophy at the MS Center is to really partner with our patients so that we can work together as a team to give them the best possible care uh, for the treatment of, and management of their disease. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, Pat, when you look at treatment, why don't you talk about that? It just seems like there are more treatments today than yesterday. That's, that's very true. So um, back in the mid-1990s, we really had no treatments for MS. Mm -hmm. We now have over 25 treatments for MS and more coming, uh, coming on the horizon. The treatment landscape has become very complex. Um, there is uh, many choices open to patients. Um, and having discussions with our patients in, in a model of shared decision making, mm -hmm. uh, deciding which is the right therapy for each individual patient is really what we strive for. Um, certainly, um, there are certain um, conditions that may uh, preclude somebody from being on one treatment versus another. Mm -hmm. We have to look into uh, their, certainly their disease type. Um, we have to also look into any comorbidities or other medical illnesses that they may have. Um, but certainly tailoring the treatment to them specifically so that they would be on the best treatment for themselves um, is, and for the management of their disease is, is really the goal. Uh, that's interesting. You know, when I look at the MS Care Center in preparation for this, you have uh, the renowned Dr. Patricia Coyle mm -hmm. on your staff. We do. Uh, nationwide renowned as the top neurologist in uh, multiple sclerosis. That's Can correct. you talk towards her? What's Ab her role? Well, absolutely. So Dr. Coyle is actually world-renowned. She speaks world. internationally, um, and she is uh, really a thought leader and, and really recognized as an expert in the field. She, uh, she is the director of our MS Center. Mm -hmm. uh, she also sees patients um, uh, two or three days per week. She is very involved in our clinical trials. Um, and she really, she's very collaborative. We, we work together as a team, all of the providers, myself included, along with, again, our physical therapists, uh, neuropsychologists, psychologists, psychiatry, and any other specialties mm -hmm. that we may, may work with. And for our audience, where are you located? We're located in East Setauket. Our outpatient office is 181 Bellmead Road in East Setauket. Okay, great, great, great. You know, it's quite interesting uh, what we have in the care center, but it's also interesting that we have the Multiple Sclerosis Society, nationwide known. Uh, joining us today is Dana, mm -hmm. and I'd like to hear from Dana, you know, what you're doing. Talk a bit about the society, okay? Talk a little bit about the interaction with the care center. And last year, I believe we honored Dr. Coyle we did. in the yes, runway event. 
So why don't you talk sure. a little bit about that? Well, first off, I want to thank Gary Carpenter for hosting us and having us here, as well as Kelly from Helping Hearts at Home. Very grateful for this opportunity to be at the table with you all, with Patricia Melville, and to have Annie here as well from the walk team at the Society. We are at the Society is for all people living with multiple sclerosis. And we have been around for 76 years. Mm -hmm. And last year we updated our mission statement for the first time to use the word cure. And we don't use that word lightly. We take that word and it really holds a lot of value. We use the mission statement, it reads, we will cure MS and we will empower people affected by MS mm -hmm. to live their best lives. And as I hear you speak, uh, Patricia, about your center and how you care for patients in your community, I hear that come true. And that's where we have our partnership with the MS Care Center at Stony Brook. We have partners in MS Care throughout the entire country that partner with the National MS Society to provide access to resources and education and support. It's a service and it's a partnership for patients and it's also a service and a partnership for professional health care providers mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful partnership I have to say and it's something that's been around for a very long time Stony Brook is a longtime partner at the National MS Society and this is one of the pillars of support that we provide to people that are living with and also affected by MS mm -hmm. so while programs and services are also very important we offer programs for newly diagnosed patients we offer programs for wellness to understand how to live your best life what you should eat how you should move how you should bring let's say, therapy into your life and physical therapy. There's all different ways that we can all lean into living our best lives. Mm -hmm. And we have programs for the Black MS community. We have programs for the Latinx community. We are taking a look at the whole landscape of MS throughout the country. We understand that there are over one million people living with MS, and the society is affiliated with at least half of those people in our database. Mm -hmm. So we are on a mission to find the rest of the people that are living with MS and go into the communities and to work with not only the MS care centers, but also with general neurologists. We know that two-thirds of MS patients see a general neurologist. And so we are dedicated to partnering across the country to have general neurologists have the information about the society, to understand what resources that we provide, to understand our MS Navigator program where we can help anyone anywhere. The National MS Society is for all people living with MS. No one should face MS alone and this is a society for all people until we have a cure and we are dedicated to getting people the access to the services they need. So on top of services and programs and our MS Navigator program, which really anyone can access at any time, if you visit our website, you can call the navigators, you can chat with them. If you need help navigating insurance, if you need a ramp in your home, if you need an air conditioner, you can call our navigator service and be directed to the care mm -hmm. that you deserve. Mm -hmm. So on top of programs and services, we have our research, which you mentioned there's over 25 treatments available. The National MS Society has funded to date over $1 billion for MS research. Mm -hmm. We have funded the trials for most of the medications that are out and many to come. We have fellows that have advanced in their career due to the early, uh, the early grants that we have provided and the investments that we've made. And it's a amazing to see that in the last five years we have made more progress than in the last 76 mm -hmm. years. This is quite an exciting time. It's a moment in time and we recently have launched a roadmap to the cures. It's our, called our Pathways to Cures initiative. This is an international collaboration with global leaders and conveners in the MS movement where we have paved the way for what the cures look like with stopping MS, restoring MS, and ending MS for all people. You know, you know something, Dana? I really think that I, um, Long Island, we're very lucky. We are lucky in this world of multiple sclerosis. Not only do we have a beautiful facility like the MS Society giving us guidance, but we're right next to the care center, okay, the number one care center in America. I mean, if you're going to have multiple sclerosis, 
and you have to deal with it, Long Island's the place to deal with it, okay? Because we have added service. We could reach different areas. What are challenges that you feel as the society? It, do pe are people aware of the society? Is that a challenge? I believe that there is a misconception of what multiple sclerosis is. I okay. think people hear MS and they don't necessarily understand the disease. Yep. I feel as though we've come into communication with people who are diagnosed with MS and they don't know how to talk about it with their own family. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to talk about mm -hmm. it at work. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to share with their employer that they have MS because they're afraid their employer will look at them in a different light. Mm -hmm. They're afraid that it'll change the trajectory of their career and that possibly they'll be judged. And yep. so we have many conversations yep. with people to change that narrative and help them through that process. And so I feel as though the challenges with MS, yes, we don't, we, I mentioned we are engaged with more than, a little more than half of the people that are living with MS in the country. And so instead of just being on the sidelines waiting for people to find us, we are proactively going into communities through community councils as you're the chair of the Suffolk County Community yep. Council yep. to find people, to host free events, to put information into offices of people that are treating patients that are mm -hmm. diagnosed with MS and living with this disease. We are actively trying to make sure that people understand the services that we provide by being a very, a, to being the resource, to, to having a website that's mm -hmm. very thorough, that has information and access to anything someone could quite possibly need. And so we're constantly taking a look at the opportunities that we have to put the information in the hands wow. of people yep. who need it and mm -hmm. then making sure that people know the society is a trusted resource and there for them. That's true. You know, and, and through this all, the society, um, as well as what uh, Pat does, funding is very important. Funding is very important. Getting the money to run an effective organization is key. Joining us here is Annie. Annie runs the MS Walk for um, the society statewide. Okay, and I'd like Annie to talk about the MS Walk. Of course, and again, thank you so much, Gary, for having us today. Um, Dana, I always love when this comes up in our conversations about how we know there are one million people living with MS in the United States, mm -hmm. but right now we're really only connected to half. And so Walk MS is one of the ways that we try to meet people where they are. It's often the first event that someone who is newly diagnosed with MS participates in. It's often their gateway into the society because it's a no barrier to entry event. By that, what I mean is that there are no registration fees. This is a come-as-you-are, very family-friendly fundraising event that we host every single year. Um, our walk on Long Island is one of the mega walks, as you mentioned. I believe there's only about seven mega walks across the country. Yep. We do have 230 walks total. Yep. Very proud to say that Walk MS as a campaign raised over $28 million in 2022 to fund Breakthroughs for a Cure. So you are absolutely right, Gary. Walk MS is a sure, sure way that we are continuing mm -hmm. to fund progress to find that cure. Walk MS Long Island is one of our top walks in the state. In 2022 alone, we raised over 530. We have some ambitious goals for 2023, <laughs> but I know that we'll get there um, in raising 600,000. So. Yeah, if I could comment on that for a second. Of course. Okay. <laughs> 530, you know, we were uh, number two. In the state, yeah. mm -hmm. in the state, Long Island was the second largest fundraiser. fundraiser. Yeah. However, yeah, Walk MS Long Island is the number one what? In participants. Mm -hmm. And statewide, we had more people than any other site in the state in terms of participation. Yeah. So we're getting out yeah. there. Absolutely. And, and I've said to Annie, we have to be number one. In we terms do, of funding. and we're going to get there. We're going to get healthy there. competition. And I think, Gary, um, <laughs> you know, we know that there are roughly about ten thousand people living with MS across Long Island. Mm -hmm. um, so we are one of the highest concentrated areas of people living with MS in the country. Mm -hmm. And so this walk is so crucial to 
meeting people where they are, especially if they're newly diagnosed, to come to the walk, to connect with the society, to connect with our partners in MS Care, to connect with a larger network of uh -huh. people who are able to support those who are affected by MS, living with MS, taking care of someone who's living sure. with MS. That's all about um, what Walk MS is all about. So, so then get what becomes your strategy then for mm -hmm. 23? You had a great 22. Mm -hmm. How are you going to make 23 that much better? Absolutely. So we are very fortunate at the society. Most of our walks do um, receive lots of wonderful corporate support from a mm -hmm. lot of local businesses. And that is something that we are always trying to reach out into the community even further. I yep. mean, we all know the Long Island community is one of the strongest out there. They will rally behind their own. They will rally behind our mission. And so we really like to strengthen our partnerships within the local communities mm -hmm. that um, are serving the people that we serve who are living with MS. And so we love to partner with local businesses. We also like to get into our partners in MS care. We like to make that connection with the people who are providing like care for people living with MS to let them know that, hey, if, if you need to connect with someone, if you need to join a community of people who are going to be there to support you, come to the walk. You know, that's what it's all about. And so we love to encourage people, bring your friends, bring mm -hmm. your family. Um, so really relying on that corporate support right. and letting people know that Walk MS is there for you. Um, it's a community event. It's at Jones Beach, which is a beautiful setting. We're very lucky to have that on Long Island. I think there's only a couple beach walks across the country. Um, so it really makes for a wonderful day. You know, from that standpoint, does your facility... Do you, are you promoting at the care center the walk? We certainly do. Yeah. I mean, we certainly notify our <laughs> patients. We have I have several of my patients who are team captains yep. who are very, okay, very um, avidly involved with the walk and are mm -hmm. very proud um, to raise funds for the walk, and we certainly do support it. Absolutely, wow, and good. Stony Brook itself is one of our corporate teams. Great, yeah, so, great, yeah. great. Well, that's good. Well, what I'd like to do is talk with Kelly now. Kelly is the CEO, founder, as I said before, of Helping Hearts at Home, the biggest companion care agency on Long Island, and, and they do touch families that are touched by multiple sclerosis. Kelly, how do you deal with that situation? When we go into people's homes yeah. and we have a client that is dealing with MS, we set up support systems around them so that they could be successful at home, get to their doctor appointments. Uh, whatever PT or OT they're doing, we can follow up with that every day, make mm -hmm. sure that they stay on their plan and keep themselves as active and engaged as possible. Um, our caregivers are educated in MS and understand the disease okay. process. Um, you know, to a lower level, not not like the like nurse's level, but uh, enough to be able to make a difference and understand the disease process. Mm -hmm. Yet you do have two very, very what I call talented nurses, besides yourself, Kelly, you got Brienne. Yes. Brienne, okay. Brienne. Why don't you mention Brienne? Brienne is, uh, comes to us from uh, Stony Brook Hospital, and she is our director of case management. She has a master's in nursing, mm -hmm. and um, she's very dynamic, and um, she's been helping with growing, you know, the caseload, and she goes in and she observes the, you know, the house dynamics, you know, how people come in yeah. and they talk to you. And they tell you one story, and it's like a little piece of the story. Yes, it's not the sure. whole situation. <laughs> so going into the house it affords us the ability to be able to see what really goes on. Sure. So we get a different perspective, and then that, that's how we build up our plan around mm -hmm. the client to make sure that they are able to still be successful and safe and continue to thrive. Yeah. And I love that cure mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. That you is know, definitely going to happen. There. <laughs> you know, one of the things, Kelly, also is I know for a fact that you're a supporter of yes. the activities of the society. Why don't you uh, tell people what you've done in the past? Well, I supported um, a breakfast. Uh, I think by this millennium. lovely lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you came and you spoke, yes. and you did an educational session with um, people who had MS. It was a good networking event for them as well. Uh, a lot of people got to sit and talk mm -hmm. with each other. And we met mm -hmm. over there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gary spoke. Mm -hmm. And um, and because you know, Gary, this is this has been your challenge. Yes. Since since I've known you, and I have I know no one that has the wonderful attitude that you have 
go get it. Not nothing's gonna hold me back, and mm -hmm. I am just gonna keep powering through this. Yep, yep. And it's always been an ins inspiration to me. And I'm all, I'm just so proud to know you in that in that vein. Thank you very much. I have to second that. I have to say, Gary, we you have been such an inspiration with your journey. Everyone this has a very a unique camera. MS journey. This is off. This is off your script. But yeah. We're going to give you some. I know. We're doing it. So <laughs> everyone has a very unique MS journey, and everyone yes. handles a diagnosis. Yes in a different way. And the outlook that you have, the positive environment and community that you've created around you, the mm -hmm. impact that you've wanted to make on Long Island and that you have and made as a, yep. of course, as former board chair yep. of Long Island. And he, Gary walked in our runway fashion show, which is our signature gala on Long Island, mm -hmm. where we honored Dr. Dr. Patricia Coyle from Stony Brook last year. And so you continue to be a force in the community and we thank you. And that is truly in our mission, empowering people affected by MS to live their best lives. You have taken having MS and you have decided to live your best life. Mm -hmm. And this is your best life as being a convener and thought leader bringing us together yep. and to think about and talk and have opportunities to meet people and bring communities together. Yeah. So thank you, Gary. Well, thank you. Thank you for those <laughs> unscripted I comments. An <laughs> wow. inspiring example of what can what can happen, yeah. how positive things can go. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just so the audience is aware, we are having another breakfast session that Helping Hearts is sponsoring. Uh, I believe it's February, February 10th. Mm -hmm. February 10th. It's going to be at the Millennium Diner. And that time, we're going to have Dr. Gutisblatt, mm -hmm. another noted neurologist in multiple sclerosis. And again, a free event underwritten by Helping Hearts at Home. Um, so for the audience, if you can come, come. That would be great. You know, I always like to end the, this session with uh, final points. And I turn to every one of the participants, just, just give one final point. So I'll turn to you first. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to echo what everybody else said. You are an inspiration, Gary, and I can't be more proud of you. Um, but um, I think what I would like to say is that the face of MS has changed in these last two or three decades. Mm -hmm. We now have tr many treatments available for patients. We don't see people becoming disabled from the disease. Um, we now have a lot of hope that we can provide patients. So, and and as Dana mentioned, you know, we're, we're on the precipice, I hope, of a cure. Mm -hmm. So um, I would I would be thrilled to be out of business if we have a cure for MS. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I think that again the face of MS is changing, sure. and uh, I think working together as a team with your healthcare provider um, to get the best possible treatment and live your best possible life is is really mm -hmm. the goal. Well, that's great, great, mm -hmm. Kelly. Absolutely. Kelly, well, the, final uh, thoughts. You're speaking about empowering people mm -hmm. with MS. The our my company our goal is to empower seniors mm -hmm. in being living at home and and doing their best. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of on the same. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely yeah. aligning. Oh yeah, that's good. our mission is the same there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, good. that's good. Yeah, I Dana? encourage anyone out there who's listening, who's recently diagnosed, who's been living with MS, who has a love friend, caregiver that has MS to know that there's a National MS Society for you and we are here and we have a lot of services to offer, programs virtually, in person, that we are here for Long Island and mm -hmm. their National MS Society is will always continue to be mm -hmm. here for people. And we hope to yeah. see you at our breakfast on February 10th at the Millennial Diner. We invite you to join us at our runway fashion show at the Heritage Club on May 4th. And then I'll have Annie talk with you about when the, the walk is at Jones Beach next year. Of course, of course. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And yes, we would absolutely love to see you at our walk at Jones Beach. It's going to be on May 20th, Saturday, 2023. And um, in closing, I think I always like to say this to, to anyone who we're talking about the society or about multiple sclerosis, you are absolutely right. Um, breakthroughs for a cure are accelerating. Treatments are accelerating and we can't get up now. Um, we're going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to fundraise until we get that cure. And this is something that we always say internally as staff that um, it's a tagline we got from our founder, Sylvia Lowry, that we hope one day MS will stand for mystery solved and no longer mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. Well, well said. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank all the people who have uh, participated here today. 
Thank you very much. And also to the viewers, a lot of good information here. On behalf of Kelly, Helping Hearts, we're very honored to be able to do this. Look forward to our next upcoming sessions. We're going to be doing one with dealing with dementia and Alzheimer's. We're going to be dealing with also nursing home issues. And uh, see you in the future. <laughs> Take care.